Agreed. I'm not able to. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please. Thank you, sir. Hmm. A great visionary once said, progress is often equal to the difference between mind and mindset. Guess who said this? It is our very own beloved speaker of the day, Padma Vibhushan Sri N. R. Narayana Murthy, founder and chairman emeritus of Infosys. So we are at once delighted and humbled to have you with us this evening. My pleasure. We heartily welcome Dr. Father Abraham William, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Father Jose Sisi, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Anil Joseph Pinto, Registrar, Deans, HODs, faculties, and all the students of Trist University to this session. It is with great joy that we also welcome the external audience who have joined us today. We take immense pride in hosting this insightful session with Sri N. R. Narayana Murthy. I am Jane Sebastian, your MC for the session. Before we proceed with the interaction, I would like to give you all a glimpse of Sir's significant contributions and achievements. Mr. N. R. Narayana Murthy is a globally respected entrepreneur and founder of Infosys Limited. Under his leadership, Infosys became the leader in innovation, in technical, managerial and leadership training, software technology, quality, productivity, customer focus, employee satisfaction, and physical and technological infrastructure. Sir has received the Legion Donor from France, CBE from Britain, and Padma Vibhushan from India. He is the first Indian winner of Ernst and Young's World Entrepreneur of the Year Award. He has received the Thomas Jefferson Medal and James C. Morgan Global Humanitarian Award. Currently, Mr. Murthy serves on the boards of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton, New Jersey, and the United Nations Foundation. He has served on the boards of Ford Foundation in New York, HSBC, and Unilever in London. So we all stand in complete admiration and reverence of your extraordinary entrepreneurial journey combined with philanthropy. Without further ado, I now hand the session to our moderator for the day, Shriyam Agrawal, representing the University Student Council for taking over the proceedings of the most awaited part of this evening. Shriyam, over to you. Thank you, Jane. Very good evening, sir. I am so thrilled and excited for this interaction with you. And I believe that the audience is equally eager or maybe more. Out of the overwhelming number of questions which we received from the Christites to be asked in this session, we have come up with six questions from a variety of domains to cater to the diverse audience present with us today. So with your permission, may I ask the first question? Please do, please go ahead. Thanks to Jane for her kind words. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So to begin with, we have seen your profound experience of having started Infosys in the 1980s and ensuring its remarkable growth. What would be your advice to young entrepreneurs wishing to initiate their own startups in this uncertain environment which exists today post-COVID? Uh, Shreem, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks to Sri Narasimha Rao, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and leaders of successive governments, India has moved from the Hindu rate of growth of 2% of GDP to a respectable 4.5 to 9%, 4.5 in the worst case and 9 in the best case, till the epidemic hit us. The country has emerged as an economically attractive nation for foreign investors. Several young men and women in India, spurred by the spectacular success of the non-resident Indians in the Silicon Valley and on Route 128 in Boston, have started thinking about becoming entrepreneurs in India. You people are a good example of that. Entrepreneurship has become a viable option on the radar screens of the students passing out of our higher educational system, likely worse. 
the tide has turned in favor of entrepreneurship. Large number of parents and parents in law have started accepting entrepreneurship as a career option for eligible young men. Today, entrepreneurship is all about making the country better. It is considered macho and sexy. Time has arrived for India to become a nation of entrepreneurs like in the US, China, and Israel. Some of you will definitely become very successful entrepreneurs. You will transform the world in ways that I cannot imagine. My best wishes to you. To me, entrepreneurship is using the power of an idea into creating jobs and creating wealth. To succeed as an entrepreneur, you need to do the following. First, have an idea which has not occurred to anybody else in the world. Such ideas, as you know, create discontinuity in the marketplace. Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Uber, Amazon, and Airbnb are all good examples of such ideas. However, most ideas improve upon existing ideas. If your idea is one such, make sure that your idea outperforms all existing ideas in at least one of the attributes among cost, productivity, comfort, cycle time, etc. You must be able to express the power of your idea in a simple sentence and not a complex or compound sentence, no ifs and buts, because simple ideas are easy to explain, easy to understand, and easy to implement. Finally, conduct an inexpensive, quick, and simple test marketing exercise to assess whether your idea will indeed fly in the marketplace. That's what I would say. Thank you so much for your thought provoking words, sir. Yeah. I am sure whatever ideas of simplicity and feasibility you mentioned will surely benefit all the budding entrepreneurs out there. Talking of experience, do you recollect any ethical dilemma that you face in your entrepreneurial journey? And if yes, how did you overcome that? Well, there were several instances when some low level bureaucrats wanted us to pay bribes for approvals. I must say with conviction that we have had absolutely no issue with senior bureaucrats anywhere in the country, whether it's Karnataka or Delhi or Maharashtra or Orissa, anywhere, nowhere. Senior bureaucrats have always been very, very kind and very encouraging. However, these low level bureaucrats, only a small number of them, they said, you be nice to us, we will be nice to you. However, we decided not to suck up. The result was denial of approvals and delays in approvals. We were asked to pay in one case, unjustifiably high customs duties. We paid and appealed. It took 10 years to get the refund. It was very painful. We finally won. After a small number of such cases where we fought, we built up a reputation of being honest business people. The same low level government officials started respecting us. Now, everybody knows that Infosys would not do dishonest business. So my advice to you, the young entrepreneurs or the young wannabe entrepreneurs is to undergo this suffering a few times and not succumb. Then I can assure you that nobody will ask you for any bribes. That was... Indeed, insightful, sir. 
and getting to know your own experience gives us more power and confidence that how honest we need to build ourselves in future. Thank you. Moving on to the next question, sir, this is something which we are all very curious to know about. Mm. Despite having such a busy schedule, do you still find time to code? Also, considering the boom in artificial intelligence and machine learning today, do you think that coding skills should be embraced as a common component across all disciplines? You know, I am an engineer, as you know. In my undergraduate degree, I was an electrical engineer. In my graduate degree, I specialized in computer science. And I am an admirer of mathematics, algorithmics, and programming. As you know, algorithmics helps me to improve my logic. Mathematics, in my opinion, is the language of God. It is the most precise and cryptic form of communication. I do not know of any society that has solved its problems without the help of mathematics and algorithmic thinking. I use Mathematica on my laptop. As you know, Mathematica is a software package that helps you uh, solve differential equations, integral calculus, differential calculus, statistics, you know, many, many of these mathematical ideas. My belief is that every child should start learning algorithmic thinking and problem solving right from my primary school. My son started it at the age of six. This way, no matter what discipline you choose, you will still be able to think logically and algorithmically and solve your problems better than without these facilities. I would therefore make English, mathematics, and algorithmics part of every child study from primary till the 12th grade. Of course, I have to add science too to that. That's what I would say. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh we definitely resonate with you when you uh, emphasized on the points of algorithmic learning and developing our logic. Yeah. Moving on to the next question. Yeah. Sir, apart from the technical expertise, what are some of the key personality traits that you would look for in a potential employee? And which are the most important areas for improvement that today's generation needs to work upon? Well, Shem, pretty early in the life of emphasis, we realized that there are two attributes necessary for creating trust in our customers. They are competence and values. Without competence, you cannot solve the problems of your customers. If you cannot solve your customers' problems, then there is no revenue and there is no company. In an industry like ours, where change is constant, the ability to learn new skills and new expertise ahead of customers and help them tackle those issues of new technology and new ideas become very, very important. This ability is what is called learnability. That is the ability to extract generic inferences out of specific instances and using them in new unstructured situations to solve new problems. We assess this learnability by giving candidates puzzles to solve. It has worked very well for us for almost 40 years. Today, as you know, businesses depend critically on technology. Most of their mission 
critical applications or dependent on bleeding edge technology. Companies like Infosys design and maintain these applications. Our customers have to have trust in us 100% if they have to charge us with such responsibility. Therefore, it is our duty to conduct ourselves with the highest levels of transparency, integrity, honesty, commitment, and hard work, and deliver what we promise on time, within budget, and exceeding the expected quality of the cost, from the customer. That is why values are very important for a professional. So we use the byline powered by intellect, driven by values at emphasis right from the beginning. This byline communicates to our clients that emphasis professionals are trustworthy, intelligent, and competent. We also want our professionals to become multicultural people and good team members. They have to be disciplined. They have to follow the rules of the company very strictly. This is what I would say. Thank you, sir. I believe that your words have provided a novel perspective on how the youth should look on to developing their personal traits. And I personally got to learn a very important word of learnability, which you mentioned. You. And I will definitely remember it in Thank my you. years to come. Thanks. Moving forward, sir, you are a role model for countless youth. Have you had role models that you looked up to? If so, what qualities of theirs inspired you to be the person you are today? You know, I have had several role models for learning various attributes. I learned certain things from my parents. I learned certain things from my high school teachers. I learned certain things from my college teachers. And I learned certain values from my bosses, both in India and abroad. Now, coming to the corporate life in the last 30 years, I have looked up to Motorola for for their quality focus. I have looked up to Hewlett Packard during the 1990s for their employee orientation. I looked up to General Electric during the 1990s for their relentless focus on revenue growth and financial discipline. I looked up to Apple for its focus on innovation. I have looked up to Bill Gates in the last whatever, 15 years or so for his extraordinary philanthropy. Above all, I must say that my hero has been Mahatma Gandhi for his focus on leadership by example. He believed in walking the talk and practicing the precept. I don't know if you people know, Mahatma Gandhi insisted on wearing a loincloth, traveling by third class in crowded trains, and eating whatever food was given to him on the platform, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So therefore, his followers were very much worried that somebody may try to hurt him or poison him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there was an elaborate team of. Uh, 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 you know, plain clothes people guarding him when he was traveling. Sarojini Naidu, one of his compatriots, you know, said that it takes a fortune to keep this old man in poverty. It was well worth it because he was sending a very important message to the country and to the world that he was most bothered about the poorest Indian, poorest person in the world. So in my opinion, he is the finest leader that the world has produced. 
any transformation requires a lot of hard work and sacrifice as you know such hard work and sacrifice will be accepted by people only when you as their leader is trusted by them leadership by example is perhaps the most powerful way of creating trust and respect for you the leader amongst your followers because your actions speak louder than words let me stop here sir uh, i i really don't have enough words uh, on you know to tell you how how much we have learned in this in this answer right from you know uh, being very very fortunate and thankful to our parents to our primary teachers to our uh, college teachers and then straight away going up to you know everybody be it our uh, bosses in future and be it our yeah. companions in future i think you highlighted a very important point that we learn small small things from everybody and people you know, do inspire us in that you know one of the thing that i would like to add i don't want to take too much time i learned the importance of bottom line responsibility from my boss in in paris when i used to work in paris in the early 70s i was an ex he was an extraordinary individual and he acted according to the adage the buck stops at my tail that is that is an extremely important uh, attribute of a great leader and i think i learned a lot from this boss when i was working in paris go ahead sure sir i think uh... we would we would want you to speak all the more and we 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 cannot uh, you know just uh, stop our uh, thirst of learning from you but definitely uh, we will uh, uh, we have also gained a lot and uh, we will uh, and obviously we all of us look up to you as a role model as well so that that goes on without a saying uh time has flown by and, and i really cannot believe that we have come up to the last question of this uh, session but and although you did emphasize on uh, quite a bit of this part which i'm about to ask you but still uh, let me ask you a little bit more on this quality which everybody wants to develop but people are still they still feel that okay there's something more lacking okay so you said that you uh, believe in leadership by example right can you can you please tell us more on how a leader uh, can ensure efficient delegation of responsibility because we feel as this even representing the student council we feel we lack at times we feel that we can we are good enough to do the work but when it comes to giving it to somebody else there may be a mismatch no i think the important thing is when you delegate responsibility to a younger colleague first you have to assess the competence of that person because if that person does not have competence he or she won't be able to do the job that you want him or her to do so first is you have to assess his competence second you have to assess whether he is trained in the tools required to manage a specific for example you have to find out if you know does this person know project management does he know how to identify the critical path does he know how to identify slacks and uh, you know and and then how to assign talent does he know how to report delays does he know how to report costs etc does he know how to enthuse the team so i think it's very very important first to know first you have the competence second to understand if that person has the attributes third as president reagan said trust but verify in other words even though you delegate the job to some younger person you have to have periodic 
review of the progress of that person. In the beginning, that period may be maybe once in uh, three days. Then it may go to once in a week. Then it may go to once a month as the person starts improving. But it is very important to do the review because then you know whether the person has is on the right path towards success or he has taken the wrong, wrong path. If he or she has taken the wrong path, then you have to bring, you have to do course correction and bring him or her on to the right path. And then advise him or her to do the right thing. Then fourth, you have to give confidence to that person in his or her moments of uh, low confidence, because sometimes a lot of problems come and the person may, may be somewhat uh, low in confidence. That is the time when you have to encourage him, make him feel an installer and provide confidence to the person. You have to create some kind of incentive for the person to do an excellent job. Whatever be that, some people may say good words, some people may, may be recognized you know, in, in front of the colleagues, some people may provide monetary incentive, it doesn't matter whatever incentive is allowed in the, in the organization. But above all, I come back to my original thing. You have to assess whether this person has absorbed the power of leadership by example. Because if you don't lead by example, you will not get the trust of your juniors. Let me tell you a beautiful story about Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, about leadership by example. Probably many of you know this story. Once a woman brought a child with her to Mahatma and said, Gandhiji, this child wants to eat a lot of sweets. Will you please tell this child that he should, he should not eat so, so many sweets? Gandhi said, come back after 15 days and then we will meet again. So she went away. So she came back after 15 days. And then Mahatma Gandhi said, Beta, please don't eat too many sweets. It's not good for your teeth. You know, it, you will gain weight, etc., etc." Mm -hmm. So then the lady said, Gandhiji, this is known to everybody. This is, you know, for you to say this, why did you take 15 days? Mahatma said, hmm. look, these 15 days, I tried to resist eating sweet because I wanted to know how hard it is not to eat sweet before I can advise somebody else not to sweet, eat sweet. So therefore, I think leadership by example is the most important attribute for a successful leader. That's what I would say. Sir, believe me, this was such a beautiful story which you told and this is so inspiring. I mean, uh, it's just a short and sweet, beautiful story, but has great takeaways to have. And I believe uh, along with me, the audience also will have, you know, great learnings from that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thanks a lot. Would... Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that would be all from my side. Thank Before you. I hand it over to the MC, yeah. I would really like to express my heart out if I have your permission. Sure. Sir, you are an exemplar of an extraordinary leader and an inspiration to many. It was my absolute honor to interact with you. From the bottom of my heart, please accept my profound gratitude respect and thankfulness. Thank you. I am sure this conversation has been beneficial and illuminating to the audience as well. I now request Jane
to propose the vote of thanks and conclude the session. Thank you. Thank you. As we come to the end of the session, on behalf of the Student Council, the faculty, the management, and the students of Christ University, I thank our distinguished guest, Sri N. R. Narayanamurti, sir, for investing his precious time this evening and helping the youth to script their own visions for betterment. Every member in the audience, I hope, would resonate with me when I say this insightful evening has truly been a thought-provoking time for each and every member of the audience. We also extend our gratitude to Sir's office for helping us with the logistics, paving way for the smooth execution of this event. Thank you all for joining us today. Wishing you all an evening filled with reflection. <laughs>